Hey everybody, hey my 220 subscribers, I didn't know I had that many subscribers, but somehow I do. Anyway, I'm here with another Multimedia Fusion 2 tutorial about saving and loading. Some nameless person really wanted this, so here you go. Alright, so we have here a cat, cat brush, cat brush. The cat can move, his eyes point in whichever direction he's moving, and when you touch the brush, nothing happens. So let's make something happen. When you collide with the brush, and when this value brush is equal to one, stuff will happen. So when you collide with the brush, it's going to set this thing's brush value, which is its value A, I just renamed it brush, to one. When brush equals one, this thing is going to set its position on the cat. Simple enough. Brush equals one on cat collides. Brush equals one. However, when you press button one, it's going to set this thing's brush to zero. No more brush for him. So, let's test that out. Collide with the brush. Brush sets on you. Press shift. You drop the brush. There, that was me pressing shift really hard. I feel like I almost broke it. Anyway, so, how do we save that and load that? I'm just going to use this very, very simple example for loading and saving because it's really the principle that matters, not how many or what type or all that. So I'm going to do it hopefully with both the any and the array. First, let's try the array. Arrays are kind of complicated. Let's look at this thing real closely here. So you have two-dimensional arrays, three-dimensional arrays, and one-dimensional arrays. And the dimension dictates how much values, how many values, rather, you're going to save, and how many you can fit, I suppose, and how hard it's going to be on your machine. A really big array is going to be more taxing on your computer than a small one. So here's how they work. After I finish recoloring all that for no reason. Okay, so right here, this thing right here, this is x1. Because this is 1 on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis. So, if this array was two-dimensional, all you'd have was this. This would be 1, this would be 2, this would be 3, this would be 4, this would be 5. All on the x-axis. Alright, so you can save things at x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. However, when you have a two-dimensional array, then you add this. Because then you have x1, y1, x2, y1, x3, y1, x4, y1, or you could go down here and say like, x4, y4. So it gives you a much larger capacity of storage. And then there's three-dimensional arrays. When you add another layer, kind of like this, so then you have x1, y1, z1, x2, y1, z1 right here. It could go down here to x1, y4, z1. And this lock right here is going to be x2, y4, z2. So hopefully that explains how they work. And it only took me not as long as I thought. Hey, that's pretty cool. Four minutes, that's doing pretty good. Innies are more simple. When you go in here, alright, let me just say, upon pressing S and upon pressing L for save and load. So, arrays... All you can do is write to these values, really. And you can change, you can write strings so that you can change sentences and all that. You can even store your dialogue in, in an array if you want to. You can change the position manually. You can save and load from a file, which you'll have to do, and you can add it to the debugger. So let's write really simply. Enter the, vi enter the value to write. Sorry, I'm moving along at a fast pace here, but we're going to put the value brush of the cat into X1. When you press L, it's going to set the value of brush in the cat to the value 1 in the array. Let me do that again really quickly.
because I feel like I did that way too fast. Set this thing's value, brush, our value A. We're going to retrieve data from an object from the array. And we're going to go all the way down to read from X position. This is re reading the value that we just stored. And it asks, asks for the offset just of X because this is a one-dimensional array. We're going to say 1. That's where we saved it. So let's test that out real quick. We're going to save by hitting S. Alright, I'm going to close it out. Wait, no, I shouldn't have closed it out. Anyway, tapping S, tapping S, I saved it. Now I drop it. Now I'm going to hit L. Loads it right back. However, if you close it and you hit L, nothing's going to happen because we didn't save the array. So let's do that. Upon pressing S, let's add a new event here. Upon pressing S, save array to file and it'll give you, you know, your desktop and all that. I'm going to save it as save.arr which is an array file. And then start a frame. We're going to load array from file. We're going to say array.arr. Load it from the same file that we just saved. And I saved it as something different, so, you know, Alright, there we go. Saved is the same thing. Now, let's try it. I'm going to go here. I'm going to press S. Alright, now I'm going to close it this time. Now, hit L. Ta-da! There you go. You know, I wish I had some sort of... How much time do I have? Alright, I got time. And then we're going to clone it. I'm going to do it so you can actually see what I'm doing. So that's save, red is save, blue is load. I'm going to change it so that when user clicks on an object, what? Oh, haha. Uh, when user clicks on a specific object, where is it? User clicks on an object. Yeah. Oh, okay, then you get to select the object. Alright, I get it now. It's alright, guys. Hey, work. Alright. So, when you click on this one, which is a save object, it's going to save. When you click on this one, it's going to load. So, I'm going to move over here. Da 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 da. I'm going to save. Do 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 do. Alright, closing it out. We're coming back in. And let's load. Ta da! Or you could even save it when you don't have the brush, close it out, and grab it, and then click this thing, and you drop it. So it will, works both ways. All right, really quickly here, let's delete all this. Uh, oh, whoops, I shouldn't have deleted all of it. All right, there. So... Now, when I'm just going to do it this way again, when you press S, when you press L, L for load, when you press save, here's how an any works, really quickly. It has a whole bunch of these things. It has groups, items, and the file is where it's being saved to. I have it saved onto the desktop. So, we're going to write set value in the group and item. Group name is going to be S. Item name is going to be B for brush. And we're going to enter the value of this thing's brush. Upon pressing low, we're going to set brush to go into the any, get value, group item. What was the group name? Well, I think that was S. What was the item name? Well, I think that was B. And then hopefully that'll work. So I'm going to save, boom. And this thing, I think you can close it out and it'll still save because it automatically saves. So we're going to drop it. Yeah, it works. Hit L, it loads it right back. Okay. Wow, that was packed. I'm sorry. Wow, I didn't mean for you to see that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm uploading another video. Anyway, so I'm out of time. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope that explains things. If you have questions and uh, ask them on the video, I may or may not answer you.
hopefully I will. And I'll, I might post this, I might not, because, you know, it gets kind of annoying having to re-upload all of your files and all that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode, hope you learned a lot. I will see you next time, I'm that guy over there, good night.